and welcome to our last episode of the Counselor's Desk in 2019. I am very excited. You know, um, for some people, this year has been a really good one. We thank God for that. For others, it has been quite challenging. And some people are feeling disappointed already. For those of you who are disappointed, uh, I have a word for you. In fact, for everybody today. Somebody said, insanity is when people do things the same way over and over again and expect to have another result or a new result. Now, how was your 2018? Some people decided in 2018 that their 2019 was going to be different. They were going to make sure they had positive changes. And now it's 2019. Hold on. Have you realized those changes? In this episode, we are going to be finding out how we can change our resolutions to actions. How we can change our New Year's resolutions, all the things we have decided to do to achieve next year. How we can change all those resolutions into concrete actions. My name is Dr. Beatrice Tembi and I am welcoming you to the counselor's desk. I'll be right back. no desire for next year you have no aspirations you have no resolutions you haven't made up your mind how you want next year to be I ask you a question why do you think the Bible says delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart why do you think the Bible says in Proverbs 13 19 desire accomplished is sweet to the soul if you have no desire for next year, by the end of next year, your soul will not be sweet. So I challenge you, make sure you have certain things you want the Lord to do for you or certain things you want to be accomplished with the help of God for next year. Okay? Now, now I'm going to give you three things you can do to make sure what you resolve to accomplish for next year, you really accomplish them just three there are so many things i need to say but you know this is a busy time of the year i want you to digest these three and put them into actions in your life okay good now we'll go to the book uh, our book of universal principles we we'll just get one little passage there where all these three things are found okay go with me to the book of habakkuk if you don't know where that is go to the table of contents in the Bible and you'll see it there. No, I know you know where it is. Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says. And how he will answer my complaint. Verse 2. Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it must be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. For it will surely take place, it will not be delayed. That's the New Living Translation. But the one that most of us know about 
it said the, the, the King James Version or New King James, which verse 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. Now we have three different people here. We have God himself. We have um, uh, 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 the prophet Habakkuk. And we have others, those who will run with what he writes down. So I want to use this uh, opportunity today to tell you about these three factors of every resolution. If you want them to work, if you want the resolution to work, they must have these three aspects in them. Okay. Now the first one is God. You need God. Why do you need God? You need God because God also has a plan and a purpose and an aspiration for your life. He also has it. He created you for crying out loud. You think he created you without a plan, without a purpose? God is looking into this coming year and hoping, desiring, believing that you will do something better with your life. And that something better, he already has it. He says in his word that, no, God says, I quote, I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Another version says, I know the plans I have for you. Now, if you have plans for your life, resolutions you have taken, and God has plans for your life, his own <laughs> resolutions, if these two sets of plans clash, who is stronger, you or God? Whose plan, uh, I mean, will be better? Or whose, whose plan will actually take place? So, you, it is not to your best interest for your plan to clash with God's plan. You get it? I mean, of course, God will not force his plan on you. He will not. But then he will not back your own plan because it is not in alignment with his plan. So, point one. Let your plans, let your resolutions, let your, your aspirations, your projections into the coming year, let them align with the plan of God for you. That's point one. I know you will tell me that's abstract. It's not. Okay, if you can't wait on God and receive from God, if you don't know God that much, we have... We have a handbook from God. What the book we call our universal, a, a, a book of universal principles called the Bible. His will for your life is written down. I mean, the general will for everybody's life is written down there. Find out this desire, this, should I say, ambition, this, what you have in mind to accomplish next year, does it align with the word of God? You know, John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me, that's Jesus talking. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, it shall be done for you. Simple. I don't want, I, I, this, I, I just want to go, I mean, quickly, quickly, quickly. Abide in, in the Lord. So if you have made goals and resolutions for next year, it is to your interest to now, it is for your best interest Go on your knees now, or wherever you are, and say, God, these are the things I have, I desire, what I own. I want to synchronize my desire with yours. I tell you, God has the best desire for you. That is the fact. That is a fact. The best desire for you. Just say, I want to align it with yours. I want to synchronize my desire with yours. The plans for my family, the plans for, for this year, my, my, my job, I just want to synchronize it with you. Father, here am I. Just place them before the Lord and see how he would rearrange them for you and help you accomplish them. Okay? So, Habakkuk says, I will stand before the Lord. I will stand on my rampart. I will stand on my on my watchtower. I will look up to the Lord. I will wait to hear what he will say. Wow. Let's copy that. Okay? Good. So, the first, you need help from God. You need help from yourself 
and you need help from others. Oh, I forgot to tell you that. The three points. The first one, you need help from God. Second point, you must help yourself to turn your resolutions into actions. And the third point, you need help from others. Somebody told me a story that is, I mean, is so disturbing. And I don't want you or any of us to be so desperate to accomplish something next year that we ignore the will of God completely and we follow our own desires. There was a young lady who completed, um, who had a degree and she needed a job. This, I mean, it was difficult to have a good job, but she saw an advertisement in a wonderful company and she went there to get the job. I mean, the the company was so established and so wealthy. Her, the position they gave her, they were offering her, was such a high class position. And uh, she was uh, going to have a big house. She was going to have a, car, a, a company car, chauffeur driven, you know, a, a driver to drive the car. She was going to be really, really established. But the director or whoever said, he had to sleep with her. That was the condition. She refused. She said she can't do that. The man said, okay, when you are ready, come. If you are ready, meet me in this place at this time because that is the condition. I have to sleep with you first. The girl went back home and was crying and told her parents. The father said, don't do a thing like that. The mother called her behind and said, listen, I am your mother. I know what is good for you. Go and sleep with the man and have the job. After that, you're going to tell God to forgive you. You're going to repent. The girl was shocked. The mother said, listen, I'm talking to you as your mother. If something is bad, I'll tell you it's bad. But this one, even if it's bad, you can repent. So the girl went and slept with the man and got the job and everybody was happy. The father did not even know that that's what happened. After about two months, the girl came to the director and told him that she was pregnant. The director said, oh, too bad. Did they not tell you that position is reserved only for single girls because we don't want any vomiting, spitting, and all those things. We don't want any pregnant, no, no, no pregnant person can keep that position. You, you yourself, you know, you're going up, you're coming down with me. We are going to international conferences. You can't do that with pregnancy. Sorry, that position is only for single persons who are not, who will not be pregnant. There and then they stripped her of the, 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 the company, the company car, the house, everything was stripped from her. And she went back home to her parents. With the pregnancy and the, the director disowned the pregnancy completely and that's how she lost her job why she had an ambition or a goal or a, a desire but she did not synchronize it with that of god for her life that is not your portion listening to me today okay no let god not allow that to happen to you and don't allow it yourself okay great Point number two, you must help yourself. You have, if you look at Habakkuk, Habakkuk says, no, no, the Lord told Habakkuk, he was waiting on the Lord, and the Lord told him that he had to do something. He said, write the vision down. That means Habakkuk had to have a vision, and he had to, write it down you know a vision you listening to me and me we have to have something we must uh, we desire to accomplish a vision and a vision is what a mental a clear mental portrait of a preferred future how do you want you to be by the end of next year what how do you want your finances to be your health to be whatever you want to change those things you say you, you your resolutions you must have a clear mental picture of it and for it to be very clear you must write god himself says write it down okay and i want to add something when you want to write down first of all 
write what caused you to have that desire. Where did that desire originate from? We call that a pre-vision. You cannot just say, I want to, I don't know what, what are your resolutions for next year? I want to achieve this. Why? Okay, I want to, by December next year, I want to buy a house. Why? What is wrong with the present one you're living in? Good. If something is wrong with it, if maybe you're spending too much money, maybe it is small, you must write it down. Write what has disturbed you until you have resolved that by the end of next year, there must be a change. Okay? If you don't, listen, if you don't, your resolutions will end after one week or one month. If you cannot uh, articulate, if you cannot articulate what, what, I mean, your disturbing situation, then your dis you will not have enough thrust to accomplish your desire, to accomplish your resolutions. Resolutions on themselves cannot, they must be propped up by action. They can't stand. Have you ever heard of the, the, uh, the resolutions of the apostles as a book in the Bible? No. But we have the Acts of the Apostles. <laughs> because resolutions must be turned to action. Okay? Great. So please, before God would help you accomplish something, He, God, will give, put a burden in your heart. And he, he will make you uncomfortable with your present situation. Look at when God wanted to use Moses to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. What did he do? He caused Moses to leave the palace, go down to see, go down to where the Israelites were. And just at that time, he saw how they were maltreating them. So he had a strong desire to do something about it. If you say, oh, Lulu, look, my financial situation must change, I'll ask you why. If there is some, if there is nothing now that is really disturbing you about your financial situation, you'll say it by word of mouth, but you do nothing about it. And that thing that is disturbing you, for you not to forget it after some few months, write it down. Did you have a situation where because of lack of money, you had a real embarrassing situation? Write that down so that you don't forget it. We call, if, you, if you can't do that, if you can't do that, you will go nowhere. And the, 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 the bad thing is that many people are so satisfied with their condition now that although they make these resolutions, they don't have anything bothering them. They have, if you can have breakfast in the morning and uh, maybe some dinner, they are okay. But that's not the life God wanted you to have. No, no, no. That's not the life God wanted you to have. So you must have a burden. If you don't have it, go like Habakkuk. Go somewhere, retreat somewhere and, and ask God to put a burden in your heart that will propel you to have a change. Okay? Good. What have I been saying for this episode? Because this is just part one. I'm going to come back for part two. But I've, I've, I've been saying that you cannot keep doing things the same old way and think that you have new results. I've been saying that, think about your life. How the resolutions you made 2018, this is 2019 ending. Have you achieved them? If not, why not? Find out again, your resolutions, are they clashing with God's desire for your life? Did you ask God? Do you have a working relationship with God that you can ask Him about His plans for your life before, before drawing out your final draft of your resolution? If not, start up your resolution or your ne next year 
by having a working relationship with God. And it's easy, it's just by means of prayer. Okay? It's just by means of prayer. Present your list of resolutions to Him and then ask Him to take over your life and run it for you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. It looks short, I know, but I'm, I'll be right back because I don't want it to be too long with part two of this where I'm going to tell you how you need help from others. God bless you. Don't forget to share. Share it widely so that all your friends will know how to prop up their resolutions by action.